You're listening to the Gold Standard Podcast. I'm your host, three-time Olympian and motivational speaker, Leah Amico. On this show, we're going to dig deep to unlock what it actually takes to build a foundation for greatness. If you're an ambitious person with big vision, but you feel like fear is holding you back, get ready for some major breakthroughs. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Gold Standard Podcast sponsored by the Major Media League. Today's guest is at the top of the game, the top of her game. She is a member of the NFCA Hall of Fame. She is the 14-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Uh, She had just completed her 28th season as the head coach at the University of Oklahoma softball. And probably had the best summer because she is coming off of not only a national championship in the 2022 season, but back to back, it was her sixth national championship title. So I want to welcome to the show head coach, Patty Gasso. Thank you for having me. I'm always excited to talk with you. All right, Patty, what, what does it take? (laughs) What does it take in 2022 what, what is the special sauce? What's the, the, the magic? I mean, you clearly in this decade in softball are the one who has seemed to figure it out. What, what would you just say, or just, you know, maybe one of the main things that you feel like help your teams to be the best there is. Okay. I cannot share the secret sauce. That's why it's called secret, <laughs> but I can say, um, I think it's just really hard work, hard work by players and what they do at practice, hard work by coaches, because really the foundation of any program is recruiting, bottom line. If you don't get the right players in your program, um, it's hard to, to win championships. So it, we, we vet the process out really well, do our diligence. We work very, very hard in recruiting and really try to make sure we get the people that fit us properly. Your ideas don't have to align with mine, anything like that. There's no judgment on any of that. It's more about, do you have what it takes to grind? Do you have what it takes? Do you have the confidence? Do you have the leadership? There's so much that we put into that. I think that, I don't know that secret sauce, I would expect that every coach feels the same way. Well, and that work that you talk about, I love that because, you know, it's not only about the talent, obviously you have to have talent. Like you're saying, you're looking for somebody who is able to have a specific skill sets and play different roles for you. But like you mentioned, the leadership piece, the work ethic and putting that time in. And I, I love that because I feel like it's that reminder that everybody that works hard is going to see results. Even if you're right now, not at the top of your game or not the very best, you can become that much better. So one of the taglines that Oklahoma softball uses a lot on social media. And I hear it talked about a lot is championship mindset. What can you explain that to me? What that means? Yeah. You know, we, we, to be honest, we kind of stole it from Russell Wilson when he was with the Seahawks. He was a young guy, quarterback, youngest guy on the team that was being such an outstanding leader. And he kept using the phrase, championship mindset we're behind we're ahead we just it was just this um fearless no quit team first um all the things just by in his in his little sound bites made me feel like this is what we want to be this is how we want to live um that's really where we established it. And then we just added things to it along the way. Um, just our non-negotiables, um, just having an, a very inclusive environment where everyone feels comfortable, that there's no negative, there's no boohooing. It's just always team first, putting teammates in front of you. It's coming to practice prepared It's coming to practice with confidence. It's understanding that mistakes are necessary in order to get better, that softball doesn't define who you are, that you play, you can play with passion and play um, free and just know that 
this this program is not made for everyone and it takes a special athlete to to i don't know we look for athletes that are built for us and it all comes from me sitting in the stands and watching you play but then i'm watching what how you're interacting with your parents i'm watching how you interact with your coach with your teammates i watch you as much off the field as I do on the field, not like I'm a creepy stalker, but more of knowing that I am about to offer you a quarter of a million dollar scholarship over five years. So that's a big investment. And as any good businesswoman would do, I want to make sure that this investment is right for our team. So I put a lot of all of our, our coaches put a lot of work into um, finding the right match for this program and the way we go about doing things is next level. I believe that any company, any program, any team is only going to be successful, like you mentioned, by having the right group of people, women for softball who, like you said, are willing to sacrifice, willing to put the team above themselves. Um, you have a lot of superstars, but sometimes you got to be willing to say, it's not about getting my name in the paper. It's about doing what I can to help my team, no matter who gets the credit. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about those qualities that you have seen that maybe specifically stand out to you of what makes the elite athletes just a step above the rest. Yeah. I, I guess I could talk a little bit about Jocelyn Allo, who, uh, in my mind, although she didn't play a lot of defense, she is an elite athlete, and so are those under her. What elite athletes do is they study. They, they besides schoolwork, <laughs> they study the game. They study the – they do a lot of things on their own, and they do it without being told. They do it when no one's looking. They do it because they want to be great. And they know that's part of it. Jocelyn Allo used to watch a lot of video and she became a student of hitting and a very good student of hitting. Elite athletes share their knowledge. So Jocelyn Allo was like having another coach in the dugout. She could go up to the plate and then come back in the dugout and share valuable knowledge. I see when players, maybe they, they ground out and they're going back to the dugout and they whisper something to the next hitter. And I'm thinking, what are you, what are you really saying? What are you saying? Are you saying the truth? Are you know what you're saying? Are you educated enough to know that your information is going to help your next hitter? And Jocelyn Allo shares her knowledge, works hard on her own. She will go hit a lot. Um, Stay in shape uh, is important. Sleep is important. Hydration and sleep habits. And that is where this phone comes into play and how it just takes over a lot of our time. And it becomes an addiction that you need. You have to see who's saying what, what are they saying, so forth. So all of those things take away from what is most important for an athlete in this day, day and age we have not really talked about in the past is sleep and they just don't sleep. And so it's just keeping elite athletes, keep their, their engine full of oil and they, they just keep their tank full. They know what you need to be a fine running machine, so to speak. So that is the hydration and that is the sleep and that is mental clarity and taking time for yourself away from the game and having a good schedule and being organized and staying so far above water that you are able to breathe freely and not feel like you're suffocating. A lot of young players go into college and they get overwhelmed and they don't have a plan and they feel like they're they're drowning. And when you're doing that, you are, you're just begging for help. You're reaching like, save me. I don't know how to get out of this. So it's learning the system and getting ahead of it and knowing how to manage it. And that, that really too becomes a difference between a girl and a woman. And those are 
the words we use when young people come into the program is it's going to take you time to get to womanhood, but we're going to show you how to do it. And that's, that's where Jossie and some of these other elite athletes, they've learned it and they share it. Well, in my mind too, I just think about that goal. Like it's not just to win a national championship, but when you hear that, like, okay, okay, I'm a girl, I'm young. I'm I mean, I'm growing, but no, I want to, I want to reach that next level. And in my mind, when you say that we're going to become women, we're going to learn how to be mature and responsible and accountable and all those different things, you know, in a day and age where, um, mental health is such, you know, a big issue and there's a lot of struggles and a lot of headlines in the story, especially with female athletes at the collegiate level, what is something that Oklahoma softball does to help these athletes with their mental health? Yeah, that's a great question. I just had a meeting earlier this morning with um, our pros office, which is psychological resources for the student athlete. Uh, they are available 24 seven and that's wonderful. And I, as a coach, it's very important that I have a relationship with them. Now, I, I'm not asking who's coming in to talk with you. That is not my right. This is, this is like going to a psychologist where everything is confidential. So I don't have the rights to infringe on anybody, but I have to create a relationship with my players so they know they can come to me and say, I coach, I need a mental health day. And if I'm the coach, it's like, are you kidding me? Come on, get over it. Let's go, be tough. This is, you have no problems, just be tough. That, that's the old school. And I'll be honest, I understand what they're talking about because times I feel it. So there have been athletes on our team that have asked for a mental health day and 100% I will give it to them. And I will tell you what happens when I do and they take a day or two, they come back fired up, ready to go. And when I give them that day off, it's not to go to the nail salon. It's not to go have dinner with, you know, all your friends. It's go into the pro's office, find someone you can talk to that can relieve some of your pressures or kind of, you know, that, that little circle that you should have a small circle of people that you trust um, as Sue Enquist calls like a board of directors or your like circle of safety people that, you know, I can tell them anything and they'll have the right answer for me. You, you have to work on your mental health. If you have a mental day off, it's not go sleep for five hours while we're practicing. So it's an understanding of what you need it for and what you should do with it. And uh, I understand that completely. And I think every coach must understand that because it is a real, real life issue in today's world of athletics. Well, and I, I think it's actually just a real issue in the world right now, no matter what we're doing, no matter what age we are, no matter what situations we're in, people with a lot of money, people with no money, people with a great job, people with no job. Really, you're just hearing so much. I know that I spent a little bit of time when I was at the Women's College World Series um, getting a tour around the Oklahoma City Police Department. And that was one of the things they talked about is in their you know, unit, they actually have a place where these officers can go. And in the past, that was something they said that people to look down on people for thinking, oh, why are you needing help that way? But they said, no questions asked. That is, we want you to go. If you need a day off, they give it to them there. And I think that says a lot just for, especially those first responders. And so it's just that reminder, I think for all of us, I know with COVID for me, I had a week where I was just inside and that is not good for me personally. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to the beach, no matter what, one day, whether I go with friends or without, and just that one day, like you said, for me doing something that I feel like kind of makes me feel alive. Like it did it, it rejuvenated me. I was mentally in a better place. So, okay. Let's talk a little bit about, um, family because, you have lived this out. You raised your two boys on the softball field. Now, both of them are division one softball coaches, one with you, JT Gasso on your staff as your assistant coach working with hitters. And then your other son, DJ is at university of 
um, Utah. And so talk to me just a little bit about um, women, I would say in the workforce, what does that look like to juggle being a wife, a mom, and really just somebody who is reaching the pinnacle of your career? Yeah, I think you would have to go back to the mental health side because moms have to deal with that themselves, just being the boss of a a program, the boss of your family. Uh, You go to work, you come home and you have another job to do. So it's like you're working all day. It's exhausting. Uh, But the important part of making that work is is including your family in all things, in all things that you do. So when my boys were young, the play, they were they were like um, oh, Stillwell in A League of Their Own, the little <laughs> kid that would just be <laughs> hiding their gloves and putting dirt in their cleats and doing just stupid things. Um, but I wanted them around the team because the team needed to be part of our family as well. And including my husband is important, but also having when you're gone, if you can't bring your kids, you got to have a support. Again, I had some phenomenal neighbors that could help us out um, that were very much like family. So you have to create a group of people around you that are willing to help your cause and Um, There are a lot. I'm the one that's very prideful, like, oh, I don't want to add. No, I don't want to burden them. No, I don't want to. Oh, people are begging. Like, come on, let us take your kids. We'll have a blast. So it's it's setting down your ego and knowing what you're trying to do and knowing I. It's a story I won't get too far into, but I know when JT was about 12 years old, I was thinking I'm done. I, I am not being a good mom. I'm not being a good coach. I am. I don't know how to spend my time. And I thought I'm going to D1 college too much, too much time, too much energy, too much travel. And JT changed everything for me and said, if you weren't coaching, you wouldn't be the mom that we know. You wouldn't be happy. I believe you wouldn't be happy. We're fine. We're playing wall ball while you're on the field. We're hanging out with the siblings of your players. I mean, we are having a great time. And what he said was true. I just didn't believe it. I felt I needed him to tell me that he was okay, that they were okay and they're having fun. And it's okay if I have to be gone, they can handle it. They have fun with the other people in the neighborhood, so forth. So I think that's the big thing now. It's full circle. They're out coaching. One of them's coaching with me. And I have three grandkids that are 10 minutes away from me because he is coaching with me. Um, so it's it's um, what I had to do. And I think mothers feel very guilty about it. but. Um, your kids are behind you more than you know. And for them to be coaching now, it's like, wow, it's a wow factor to me. I love seeing the pictures of Jim Gasso, your husband, who's always the loudest one cheering in the stands at every national championship game. And, you know, and then now the grandkids in the stands as well. I love seeing the entire family and then you guys win and all, all the little ones are out there with you all. And to me, that's, that's just that picture of, okay, it's all worth it. You know? And I feel like if you're called to me, that's what I look at. I see people who are able to balance it all. It doesn't mean there's not really hard seasons. Like you talked about in times, do you think, am I doing the right thing? But like you mentioned, I think we can hear the right words at the right time that show, you no, this is your calling. You're supposed to be there. Uh, Talk to me a little bit about, um, the faith Oklahoma softball has kind of been known for that. You guys have a theme every year and the athletes kind of take that on themselves. Talk to me just a little bit, maybe about the theme this year and how that kind of inspires your teams. Yeah, it's been amazing as you and I have talked about on, on our own, just how the Lord has made his presence felt at the college world series without us holding up Bibles and preaching. Um, It's more of, whether it comes from our team, whether it comes from someone who is leading a chapel for us or what have you. Um, This last year, uh, well, we had a couple themes. And what's interesting too is I 
I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I got to come up with something, a really good something that they can buy into that's biblical if they want to take that route. And um, every time I try, I just feel God saying, will you stop? This is not, this is my lane, not your lane. It's coming. Just stop. And I'm <laughs> being very, I get humbled quickly. <laughs> and um, this year they, it was kind of like, for, talked a little bit about for the like for him we're playing for him and so they have this battle um it's spelled b-a-t-l which is boast about the lord this is coming from grace lions who kind of preaches in it into our locker room for those who want to join in um, but then the A turned into the number four. So if you think of a four, it's very much like an A. So then it was battle for the Lord. They, I mean, they're turning this into all kinds of different cheers and everything. But then we had talked in one of the books uh, um, that I read a while ago, and Sarah Roberts with the FCA reminded me about it. And it, the title is if you uh, want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And so the message was stop being afraid or fearful of losing or fearful of getting out of the boat and drowning. Get out of the boat, walk on the water, believe, trust in you, your teammates, trust that the Lord's going to lead us through this. Whether we win or whether we don't, just have no fear just trust where he's going to lead us whatever wherever he leads us is for that reason it's in his it's his will so the next thing you know the team bought into that and they are getting into that like rowing motion when they get on base like that like they're rowing the boat and um people in the stands ask what are they doing and those parents and people up in the front row the first like probably 25 rows know what's going on and then they share it and then it's it's kind of like telephone it goes all around the stadium and for the last since 2013 up till now there has been some kind of theme or some kind of message that this team they live in and they use a platform to let other people know about it whether they care or not. And uh, it seems like a lot of them care these days. Well, I'm talking to Grace Lyons. She's just a phenomenal athlete, but an even better person filled with so much faith in the Lord and Riley Boone and talking to some of the others. I know, you know, so many times it is talked about how do we get our athletes to play relaxed and free. And like you said, fear of failure that stops people, not only athletes, because that's something that is very real, you know, as an athlete, but also in life in corporate world in so many different areas, people who never really reach their full potential because fear keep, you know, holds them back before they even get started. And so I love how you guys tie that in. And when there is a different focus and different purpose and something bigger than yourself, sometimes it just takes all that pressure, puts it into another spot. Okay. So the gold standard, that's what this podcast is called, and it's, you know, obviously have gold medals and it's all about reaching that pinnacle, that peak. But there's different components that go to that. You've already talked about a number of aspects, having the right team, the right people, the right standards, work ethic, all of that. But let's go into each letter. So the first thing is goals. How does Oklahoma softball talk about goals? Obviously, you come in and it's an expected to win a national championship. But do you guys do anything specifically with goal setting? We don't, to be honest. I used to a lot, but um, I think our goal, it's not a goal, it's our standard, like you said, it is, it's not our goal to be blue collar, it's the standard, it's who we are, it's not a goal to be that, it's who we will be, there's no, it's non-negotiable, that is who we need to be, if you want what you want, which is a national championship, and holding that trophy up, here are the things that we must do as a team, to me, sometimes goals get a little selfish or one side. Now, those a lot of these players have their own goals. I want to be an All-American, and that is totally fine. We don't talk about that stuff. We never talk about awards or honors. 
because it takes away from team. Now, if you want to be an All-American, I am all for that. And I will work you as hard as I can to get you there. But it is voted by people. It's the human aspect behind it. And usually when a human is behind it, there's also something else behind it. And so, you know, when you look at all kinds of things that we can't control because it's driven by voting or what have you, um, I've had a few after athletes in the past be upset and I'm like it's out of your control why can you be upset it's out of your control do what you do stay with us stay team concept so uh, we don't write down goals we write down expectations we write down this is was what I expect us to do and then those goals will come to you but we don't list those first we list those we don't list those at all we know, I know what our goals are. We know what we want. So these, this is a standard in order to get what you want. And that's, that's how I feel. Like for me, it was like, once I saw that Olympic team, which I, you know, heard about the college scholarship, like I, I knew where I wanted to end up. I knew, I knew where I wanted to be. And so then it was like, okay, what do I have to do on a daily basis? Like you just said, like, what is my standard? What am I going to do daily? What are, you know, what am I striving toward and kind of knowing where you want to end up? Um, I think sometimes if anything, some teams probably don't give themselves that much credit. I remember hearing of a team and the coach said, you know, name top five teams in the country. And the coach said, you know, our, our team very like two players put our own team. <laughs> so he's like, okay, so that tells me if you don't believe you're one of the top five teams, you're definitely not going to be one of the top five teams. So I think getting those right people who have that type of belief, that type of, you know, striving and desire. So I like how you wrote that, that it's the standard and the expectations. Okay. So, Oh, overcoming obstacles. What challenges have you faced? Um, you know, what, what would you say is the hardest thing about being a coach? of college athletes in today's day and age? <laughs> uh, there is a list of things now. <laughs> the list gets longer every year. Um, I guess, and I'm sure athletes are tired of hearing this, but it is an interruption and that is the phone and the addiction to the phone and always wanting to see it, read it. Uh, it, it affects sleep. It affects all those things. Um, NIL the ability to make money. I'm all for that a hundred percent, but are you adult enough to handle your education, the responsibilities on the field and all your NIL responsibilities? It's tough. For us, a new challenge is um, the everybody's kind of tapping us on the shoulder and our players said, can you do this? Will you take a selfie? Can you uh, do a podcast with Leah O'Brien? <laughs> <laughs> of course I will. Um, just a lot of asks and people. Um, it's an honor. It's very humbling that they love Sooner Softball. But with that comes a lot of extra um asks and wants and needs and and we as I don't know if it's just us or women in general don't I don't want to disappoint anyone we don't want to say no so we do it and we do it and we do it and um there's just not enough time in the day to get all of this done I feel it I think they feel it so it's a whole nother level of um taking care of the public and, and what they need or what they want from you. So that's just a small version of how things are quite different now. Okay. What about um, leadership is obviously a very important part. I'm sure you have a team full of leaders. What would you say makes the best leaders? Let's say first within a team. And then I want to talk a little bit about coaching. Um, putting others first, first and foremost, 100%. It's not about, um, you're a good leader. If every, you make everyone around you better, that is to me, the essence of a good leader. A good leader is not afraid to say what they need to say. 
they're not, they, they can't go in thinking, oh, I don't want to say that because then she'll get mad at me or what have you. You need to be confident in who you are, confident in what you're saying, say it in a respectful way, say it in an encouraging way, uh, but be honest with what you have to say. And that's one thing we definitely do. We're honest, but in a respectful way. And if you do it that way, then it's like, how do we get better? So a good leader on the team will um, is always looking after others, always putting them first. If um, get it, good leaders, I learned this too. There's a, a book about it. Good leaders um, always eat last. They're always at the end of the line. They always make sure everyone in front of them is taken care of. And now it's my turn. Coaches should be doing the same thing. If a coach is the first one in line at the training table or at the line at the restaurant or what have you, um, that wouldn't go well for me. Um, But some coaches think, hey, coaches deserve the respect. They should go first. I don't know. But that's how I view leadership in our program. Has there ever been any leaders that you specifically have looked up to or any mentors that you've had? Hmm. Um, There is a very good teacher of leadership and his name is Brett Ledbetter and he's made a big difference in my life um, and getting me to see things differently as a coach. And um, Well, I've admired some coaches from afar. I just don't know much about their leadership. One coach that I really, um, I wish I could have met, but she still makes me um, carry a torch is Pat Summit. And she is not a softball coach. She's a basketball coach, but her fight for women's athletic athletics affected not just basketball but the entire landscape of women's athletics and um, it's a devastating loss for many reasons and I feel as an elder in the coaching world these days that I need to take that torch and continue to try to make softball a better sport better than when I came in and if that means I have to fight for salaries or speak um and fight for rule changes or um, instant replay or extending the World Series of more days or what have you for equal rights. If the men get it, the women should get it. And there's nothing unchristian about that. Uh, to me, it is um, if we're doing the same work, you should get the same pay. Um, And the one thing that I learned that was very, (laughs) just resonated with me, two two words of wisdom. One is if you settle, if this is what they offer you in your salary and you're like, in your mind, you're going, that's not right. But you accept it because you don't want to make waves. You've settled, you've surrendered. You just surrendered. You surrendered for the next coach who's trying to fight for their salaries. I believe in that. And then the idea of, um, let's say I have my resume with no name on it. And there's a baseball coach who has no name on it. And I, these two resumes go in front of an athletic director who should make more money, which because I'm a woman or because I coach softball or my name should not be the reason. Mm-hmm. And that's still very alive and well in the world. So you think the resume, see, that's, that's a, a good point and an interesting point and not so much on what money is brought in so much. Do you think, do you think it should be tied to that at all? Obviously football, basketball, those are the big money makers. Do you think anything should be tied to that as well? Or just, just more resume? I, well, there definitely should be things tied to that, but if you, how can I show you that I can make money if my stadium seats 500 people? Yes, for sure. That's you? you can't hold that against me because that's what I'm dealing with. 
Yeah. But if we go to the Hall of Fame Stadium, 5,000 people will show up. So there's something to say for that. And I get that. I mean, football should be making, football is allowing us to do what we're doing. We all know that. At some universities, basketball is allowing you to have the luxuries that we have. Um, the hope and the goal for me, and I hope other coaches feel the same, is to be a moneymaker for yes. this, our universities. And if we can do that, great. But if we're limited with facilities, what are we supposed to do? But if we're increasing your viewership and we're on ESPN and shirts are selling off the racks in your in your uh, novelty stores. Um, there's something to say to that. You can't compare me to men or even probably women's basketball, but you can compare me to baseball. For sure. And that's that's where I think it, that that conversation absolutely should be had when you when you talk about that. And like you just said, you compare, you know, in in that setting, baseball and softball could absolutely be compared to each other. Okay. So now the last letter is D and it stands for dedication and drive. And you talked a lot about hard work. And to me, when I think about this is kind of the action piece, you, you have your goals, you know, where you want to end up. There's going to be trials and struggles along the way, but you got to overcome those things and stay focused. Leaders and mentors can really impact that journey that we're on. But what are those daily habits, daily disciplines, those kind of core pieces, you know, whether it's sacrificing, like you said, Hey, get off your phone. That's going to be a sacrifice you're going to make, or maybe you're not going to get to go on these trips with your friends, but you're going to be fighting for a national championship. And other people don't know what that feels like. Um, what are kind of maybe some daily disciplines that your program, um, really just takes pride in whether it's, you know, Hey, we're going to, you know, we got the, the gym, we got conditioning, we got, you know, on the field. And is there anything after that as well? Uh, I, well, I'll, if I'm not hitting your sweet spot here, just let me know if I'm not answering exactly what you're asking me. So, um, for us, like, are you talking kind of like non-negotiables? Yes. Non-negotiables. Okay. So, um, hustle is constant. Um, if you're not running out something first base, you're likely continuing to run around the field <laughs> or maybe I'll sit you out in the dugout until, and, and have you watch to see what it looks like. Uh, I, um, I don't like um, quiet athletes, but I also don't like athletes that talk just to talk. So um, in our sport of softball, it's, it's interesting. Like I remember one year our team was at the airport waiting for a flight and they're so loud that I had to, I have to keep shushing them, like stop, you're disrupting others. Yet when we get on the field, then they become quiet. I'm like, wait a minute. So that's, if you ever wondering why after we hit a home run, we fly in it stems from that airport story. It happened a long time ago and it just kept going. It's like, keep your energy on the field where we need it. So um, it's just that preparation, communication. Um, I wanna make sure you ate lunch before you come out and say, oh, I was, you, you gotta be organized. You got to meal prep or, um, Again, I, we keep talking about sleep, but it, it's it's all the little things you could do at home to be more disciplined that can help you uh, be the best example. I want our players to be examples for each other and and uh, raise each other in that way. And so what I hear is just making these choices that are going to make you be at your optimal performance. If you do the right things by getting the rest, eating the right foods, taking care of yourself, right. The healthy aspect of it. And then, you know, just being ready to go. And I like that because I try to tell people a lot, you know, we always say like, what makes these people so great? And it's, it's never, well, they lifted this much. And so if only you could just bench this much, then you'd have a shot at being a national champion. Or if only you could run to first base in the speed. Now those things obviously help certain players, 
but having that alone is not enough. It's all these other things that I really believe everybody can do it, whether again, you're on a softball field or whether you're in a career field or you're a mom that's trying to make your family its very best. And let's say you're even homeschooling the fact that you get up, you have a plan, you have, you know, you, you're focused, you're getting the right food. You're, you're just kind of following these steps as opposed to laying around all day, eating ice cream all day. <laughs> I love my ice cream, but the idea is just that I still that focus and there's a bigger plan and there's a bigger purpose. Okay. So we're going to do the favorite five as we get close to the end. This is kind of a quick round, uh, just to get to know Patty a little bit more. So what is your favorite book or podcast? I am not into the podcast world, so I'm probably one of a few that are not. I, I just, I don't know why. Um, actually, let's see if my favorite book is behind me. Um, I don't see it, but it is written by Brett Ledbetter, and it is called What Drives Winning. If you are a coach or even a player, it really gets you to understand things a little bit differently where you're not living, it, it will help you with that anxiety feel because you understand that you have to have life away from what we're doing. And that's important. Um, but there's some really good analogies, great analogies in there. And I also, the book I mentioned, um, it's been a while since I've read it and I need to go back, but um, if you wanna walk on water, get out of the boat. It really addresses fear. It addresses the whole fear factor. And um, there have been many times where I've been very uncomfortable doing some things. Um, and I, I've asked God to help me be um, strong enough to do it. And I just, oh, just sweating and anxious and oh, uncomfortable. But once I do it, I feel so much more, I feel accomplished. And I'm thinking, okay, you did it once. Now it's a breed. Now I can do, I could do it anytime I need to, whether it's public speaking or, or having confrontational conversations with your boss or your coach or whoever it is, where you just really, if your heart is passionate that you're not just holding back because you're afraid. Um, I think, I've surprised myself by stepping up and doing things I really didn't want to do. Um, I, I'm kind of proud of myself after I did it. And it always pays off, always pays off. Yes. I like the phrase, do it afraid. <laughs> Cause if we do not let fear hold us back, we can do a lot more than we realize. Okay. Next one. Favorite quote. Well, can I give you a verse? Yes. Um, Proverbs 31, 25. Do you know it? No, I don't. Not off. Not she, is off clothed. she is clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. The future. Yep. And that is back to the fear. If I feel like I am clothed with strength and dignity, what else do I need? And that's the Lord just having his hands on me and I am fearless. And I think that's what you see at the College World Series with our team. They are not afraid to lose. They're, they're not playing not to lose. They're playing with freedom and playing to win. Let's have fun. They're, they're very passionate and the passion you see is not fake. It's very real. Um, they celebrate on that stage, the hard work that we're about to do in the fall. It's hard work to get, and they're celebrating the fact that they're on that stage and they've worked so hard to get there. So you can go, oh my gosh, here we are. Oh gosh, what are we going to do? They're fear, fearless because they don't think or care about the outcome. They know what they're shooting for, but whatever's going to land on us, we're going to live with. It might hurt, it might be the most joyous thing you've ever felt. It might hurt, but whether it's joy or hurt, it, it lasts a couple of days and then it's gone. Good. Yes. Again, that living without fear. So important. Okay. Favorite athlete. Derek Jeter, the captain. Love Good his one. podcast. Or his Great. podcast. Love his series <laughs> on ESPN. I think there's always so much to learn from athletes like that, that have played at the top, but are so well-rounded. Okay. Favorite place you've traveled. 
Israel. Mm, it's one of my favorite as well. It's and the last one, favorite softball moment. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. I really enjoyed Jocelyn Allo breaking the record in Hawaii. That was just tremendous. But I will also add real quick, a moment that just changed my life and our players' lives forever was when the 2013 Moore tornado mm. uh, devastated the state, devastated the city, and we were in the World Series. And to watch our team uh, play for literally M-O-O-R-E, the city of Moore, but really it was the idea of playing for more than ourselves and bringing pride and joy to those who are suffering that was something I'll never forget either. I think those things have a way of just bringing us back to the reality and perspective and just thinking it's a blessing when we get to wake up, when we get to go out on a softball field, when we get to just live in freedom. I mean, all those different things and have health, you know, especially in today's day and age. All right, Patty, thank you so much. Is there anything you just want to leave us with? You've shared a lot today, so many good insights and so much wisdom that's helped you to reach, you know, the top at, of, of the softball world, especially right now. Um, anything you want to share? No, I gave you some good quotes. I do. Um, I will tell you that. Let me find one real quick. I know I, I know you want to. Um, one thing that I've really, this is a Michael Jordan quote that I really, really like. And it says, practice like you've never won, play like you've never lost. And to me, I just gave myself chills, (laughs) which doesn't happen ever. But if you are thinking as a practice player, play like you've never won. And then the confidence when you're in a game, like no one can beat you. And, and I just think too, what you've hit on is just our faith has really allowed us to be free in, in what we're doing. And it's been so phenomenal to watch as a coach. Um, it's what makes me keep going, um, going into my 29th season. And I'm loving it more than I ever have. I think that says a lot in a time where a lot of people get to the end and they just think I'm so ready to be done. So that, that says a lot. That means a lot. Again, thank you so much for sharing everything you did today. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the gold standard podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please share it with a friend. You can post on social media and tag at Leah 20 USA or use hashtag gold standard podcast. Make sure you also subscribe so you get notified each week as a new episode releases. You can subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We appreciate your reviews as they help encourage others to listen in. Until next time, live out the gold standard and keep turning your goals into reality.